all right folks what is good what is good episode 292 of the first and frame rate show i am via baller over here we talk about georgia southern and atlanta falcons football went through the whole spill for the past couple of days talking about atlanta falcons football what they're going to be doing in the draft and, and will they pick a pass rusher or a receiver or another quarterback i mean who knows will they pick a punter who knows um with the with, but we're going to put them on the back burner. We're going to double back and talk about some Georgia Southern football. And right now, everything is hanging on what the quarterback is going to be like. What's going to be on the field under center or in the shotgun? Because right now, in today's you know college football, you, you see a few places that do double or dual quarterbacks, whatever the case may be. I don't think this is going to be the case. I'd be highly surprised, but we're going to talk about down the road. We're going to talk that, about that later on in this episode. All the other positions, running back, receiver, you know, they're going to be interchanging. Defense definitely going to be interchanged. So the main thing is what's going to be that quarterback, what that quarterback is going to be like. Are we going to use a veteran like, you know, Van Treese or Ransom or Sigelski, Tomlin, or are we going to go with a young talent? Is it going to be a Roseman or is it going to be David Dallas? Is it going to be the walk-on, um, you know, Pango? You know, I mean, is it going to be that guy? I mean, goodness, it's like, you know, with that being said, I mean, that'd be really, really interesting. You know, Brooks, uh, Brooks Pangle is the walk on and, and heard some good things about him. So we're going to get into all that. But first and foremost, I want to thank you guys for the support. You guys are amazing. Listenership, viewership is all on the up and up. I really appreciate the support. If this is your first time here, welcome. Like I said, this is the first in frame rate show. I talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, interchange them throughout the throughout the week. I'm um these episodes will be up at 9 a.m. every morning uh, Eastern time. And over here, you can get all the information that I talk about when it comes to these two uh, programs or franchises. Also, if you want to listen on YouTube or Rumble. I all you gotta do is put in first and frame rate show. I should pop right on up. Also, I'm on iTunes, Google Play. I am on Stitcher, Spotify, and Anchor. And um, I'm in the works of going to other places when it comes to the podcast avenue. But listenership over there has been very, very well. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for the support. And if you really want to, you know, feel like is you want to take that extra step to support, the links are down in the description where you can check my cash app, which is VF Baller 20, or the anchor link where you can hit that link and you can uh support the podcast through anchor. I will go have other uh avenues to put up where you can support as well if you find it in your heart to do so. All right, enough of all of that. We went through the intro, we went through the where you can find this uh podcast. Let's get into this. Veteran experience and young talent. What do you think is going to be? Personally, I feel like in the beginning of the season, it's going to be Kyle Van Trees. I, I mean, he's a six-year starter, had a lot of experience at Buffalo. I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to read the playbook and learn what, um, I think it is Brian Ellis and and uh, what uh, Coach Helton wants to do with this offense. He'll probably pick it up a little bit faster than these other quarterbacks. And there's nothing to take away from them because young talent – can pick up on things very well, and their instincts in some cases uh, do outweigh, you know, in some cases, especially in college football. So with that being said, I do feel like Cal Ventry is going to be the starter, but I would not be surprised if Cam Ransom could take this job. I would not be surprised if you see somebody like Zach Roseman take this job. Sigelski actually played pretty good last year, and I've heard he's very, very intelligent when it comes to picking up on things as well. Maybe he can, uh, you know, take the reins. I, I think with all these quarterbacks in, I, I think it's going to be open competition. I think, you know, Coach Helton said that it's going to be open competition. So even somebody like, you know, the veteran, Justin Tomlin, maybe he'll do better in this offense compared to the one he was in last year. You know, Brooks Pangle, a walk on. He this is this is this is something gotta be really good about what's going on here at George Southern. With all these quarterbacks that's already here, Brooks Pangle decided to not go to I think he had an offer at Mercer. He decided not to go to Mercer and be a walk on at Georgia Southern to try to, you know, solidify himself on this roster in some shape or fashion. Now, there could be a situation where, you know, two or three of these guys may not be on the roster as quarterbacks. They may not be on the roster at all. So that's something, you know, we have to think about. But right now, with these seven quarterbacks we have, there's a possibility that one of these seven guys could be a starter. 
Um, I'm personally, I am leaning on Van Trees. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Ransom because Ransom has shown that he could play college ball. He's shown that he could play. And I feel like with this offense the way it is, he won't have to move around as much. He'll have to move around if he wants to, not because he have to. Van Trees, I've seen him move a little bit, but he's a pure passer. I think he'd be just fine with the receivers we have. Zach Roseman and Van Trees, to me, they look very similar as far as their style of quarterback play. That's going to be really interesting if, you know, 1A and 1B or 1A and 2A or, or whatever the case may be. I don't know. It's just that so many quarterbacks, I think this, you know, gone us for a discussion. Now you look at the young guys. Uh, no, before I get to the young guys, look at Sigelski. Sigelski has a little mix of both. Sigelski can move a little bit as well, but he has the poise and he has the, the talent to get the ball all over the field. I'm still hung on that BYU game. Now, don't get me wrong. If, if Ransom was healthy, I think Ransom would have done just as well as Sigelski. But there was one time, you know, Sigelski was passing for 90% against the, the, the uh, a top 15 team in, in, the, in the country with little to no experience also with the receivers that we had. Sigelski showed me that he's a college quarterback. I've seen a lot of people in my DMs were telling me that night that, hey, Sigelski looks like a college quarterback. He should be, he should have been playing a lot more than what he is now. But I think Sigelski was like, for the most part, was injured. So with that being said, that wasn't really an, you know, an option. But when he did show what he can do, he looked pretty good. And I think in this offense, he's somebody you may want to look out, look at as well. Tomlin, we already know what Tomlin can do. A lot of people was calling for Tom, Tomlin at one point. They were calling for him because Tomlin just did not – he did not do very well in the offense under Coach Rules. You know, we, we, we saw what happened last year, and it, it just didn't pan out. Maybe being under this offense, it may be a different story. We just don't know because, you know, you, you're you dealing with guys that just have a different philosophy here. We just see what plays out there. Now, when you look at the young guys, Dallas, uh, Pango, Roseman, I mean, you don't know what you're going to get out of that, especially with David Dallas. I, I think David Dallas is one of these guys. When I see him, when I looked at his tape, I saw one of these, you know, moving around the pocket, slinging the ball all over the field. Russell Wilson, uh, you know, uh, who else I can name that? Uh, Kyler Murray style quarterbacks that could get around and just put the ball, place the ball anywhere on the run and i think that is a very very uh very very impressive i don't know how well that'll play out in uh this offense but you cannot deny with instincts like that that is another level of um of talent that you have to account for for not only with the offensive coordinator but defensive coordinator our offensive coordinator but defensive coordinators that are on the other side the, the you know what what are we looking at here when it comes to these guys trying to stop somebody like a David Dallas that can really move around and throw the ball. Kind of similar like a, a Tomlin who can possibly do the same thing. Brooks Pango, I will admit I did not watch enough tape on him and I need to do so. But what happens if he does wow everybody and he moves up to the ranks and possibly be at least number two or three on the depth chart? I think that's impressive. It's just so much going on here. I don't know what's going to happen, but at the end of the day, I do think Kyle Van Treese is going to be the starter. I do believe Ransom is going to be number two. And I wouldn't be surprised if those two are interchangeable. I do feel that I'm going to say this, and it may not, it may not be, um, a lot of people may think I'm crazy. I believe David Dallas probably be third on the depth chart. That's my surprise. I think David Dallas would be third on the depth chart, if not higher. I don't think he'll get higher because Ransom and Fantrice is there. But when I look at everybody else, Pango, Tomlin, Sigelski, Roseman, and I like Roseman, and I wouldn't be surprised if Roseman is number three on the depth chart, but I got a feeling Dallas might be that guy. And moving forward, you're probably going to see Roseman come right behind him. Now, I like Sigelski a lot. I like him a whole lot. But I think with Sigelski, the way he plays, 
it does give him an advantage over some of these quarterbacks. But I think it's just something about David Dallas that kind of wows me to the point where um, he's going to make a statement on what he could do on the field. David Dallas is, is I, 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 I'm going to back up a second. My favorite commit out of everybody that we committed this year was Ashton Whitner. I think that kid is going to be very special in blue and white. There's no doubt in my mind. Just, just total gut feeling when I first saw him and see what he can do on the field and turn back around and watch what he what he done at Greenville and for the state of South Carolina. When he comes to Georgia Southern, I was like, you know what? That's going to be the guy. Once he's, you know, these other guys, he's going to learn a little bit from the Bradley Glens and, and all these other veterans that are on the team. He's going to be the leader of that defense. I, I see it. I, I don't see it any other way. I could be wrong. But personal gut feeling, I think he's going to be the leader of the defense when it's all said and done. Jun- uh, all said and done, junior senior year, he's going to be the leader of that defense. It's just something about him. He's as like this reserved. This he had this reserved vibe about him, where he looks around, where he looks like he's just trying to take everything in. When they interviewed him um a while back, um for, when they interviewed him a while back on on Georgia Southern, uh. I think it was a podcast they had. Um, you saw it in him. Like, he was very reserved, and he just answered the questions correctly, but he was constantly trying to figure out, okay, what's the next question? Like, he's he's paying a lot of attention to detail, and he's listening to detail. And for somebody to play defense, that is a very, very, very good trait to have. Now, outside of that, I'm going to get off that because we're talking about quarterbacks. I think David Dallas gives me that same type of vibe that Ashton Whitner does. That's why I feel like David Allen's going to wow some people and he's going to move up really quick to to be in blue. I think I think he's going to be very special when it comes to him, you know, playing quarterback for George Southern. But right now, you know, uh, um, Clay Helton decided to go veteran. And I understand it because when you go veteran, you try to solidify some type of stability. You try to get some stability when this is your first year, and with the transfer portal, you're able to do that. You know, with you know, with the likes of like Ransom, he's still here, and I think he'll be able to pick up on the uh, on the uh, playbook really easily. But I think Van Trees brings that security blank- blanket of um, you know of you know the security blanket of stability. So I think that's where this plays out at, at the end of the day. So. When you look at the guys like Dallas, I really feel that he's going to be that guy that's going to take this uh, program to the next level when he gets a chance. So that's why I said he's going to be number three on the depth chart. Now, when I look at the rest of these guys, it's going to be uphill battle for Justin Tomlin. I I believe that. I mean, with the talent that we have now, he's going to be like the six-year senior that's going to be possibly going into other areas when it comes to actually playing, you know, on the team, I could see him possibly, you know, moving over to uh, another position. I'm I'm not really sure. I, I, I don't know everything about that, but I can see where he probably get lost in the fold. You okay, baby? No, you got to put that down there, baby. That's my son. Y'all, y'all know how it is. He always comes up here to, to see what's going on. Nevertheless, I see where, Tomlin could be be lost in the fold. But if he does break out with this offense and do some good things, Tomlin has an arm. A lot of people get kind of down on his talent from last year, but the year before, he done pretty good throwing the ball fairly well. I don't know what happened with this year. I don't know what's going on. I think, it, it you know, the whole coaching change could have changed his outlook on how he wanted to play football. But I think with this new, co- with this new uh, coaching staff, I think he'll be able to focus a little better. And if he focuses a little bit better, I think he can be um, that guy that can actually, you know, win some games. But I'm not sure because the talent that we have is a little bit too, you know, the, the talent is a little bit too high right now. The talent is really good right now. So I'm not sure. So uh, at the end of the day, I feel that we're going to be able to do pretty well with what we have. You know, the Vantrices, the Rosemans, the Ransom in Dallas, those four guys, those four guys are really like to stand out. 
you know, this is a really good, it's going to be really good uh, to stand out with these four guys. Now, the other two, like Sigelski and Pangle. Now, like I said, Pangle could make a statement for himself as a walk-on. I'm not really sure how that plays out. I think I, I think those two could really stand out as far as being something down the road. Sigelski does have, I think he's what, a junior now or sophomore now? So he has some time to develop. But I just think Dallas is going to uh, overtake him. Pangle has a lot of time to develop because they, they, it's possible they could redshirt him. They could possibly redshirt Dallas or Roseman, you know, that, back up with Sigelski. I meant Pangle and Roseman. I think they could redshirt either one of them if they don't pan out to be, you know, on the depth chart. And that just bodes well for a longer period when it comes to Georgia Southern quarterbacks. But I think at the end of the day, we're probably going to be sitting here looking at um, veteran experience. But I think the young talent could be able to do something. I really believe that they'll be able to do something if Van Trees don't pan out. So I, I, I'm just sitting here, let's always been looking back and thinking like, okay, we got all these quarterbacks. And now what are we going to do with them? Is it going to be a situation where Van Trees just comes in and just takes a job? I don't know if it's that guaranteed, but I have my gut feeling. I feel like that's going to happen. You know, can Roseman, you know, take the job? You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't, I just, I think, I think it's at the end of the day, I think it's Van Trees and Roseman. I mean, I'm sorry, Van Trees and Ransom. I think it's just going to, it's going to be one of those two guys that's going to be the starter at the end of the day. I think it's one of them going to be the starter. And I, I, I still feel that David Dallas could be number three. Roseman would be number four. And I don't know what's going to happen to the other guys. Sigelski, you know, he could he could do it as well. But it's just something about David Dallas, like I said. I'm not really sure. But I feel at the end of the day, that's the way it's going to be. I'm very excited to see how that goes. And um, I don't know. You know, anything can happen. I mean, I just can't wait to see what happens with uh, the um, spring practices, spring game, April 23rd. I can't wait for that. You know, so let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. By the time we by the time we close this out, it should be, you know, by twenty minutes, around the time I usually do this podcast. So let me know what you guys think. That should conclude the rest of this episode. If you like this content, hit the like button, share this video, or share this podcast. Subscribe to the podcast. Give me a five star rating on that star chart on Apple. Also, if you're on Rumble, you know, share this. Let people know. If you're on the podcast side of things, subscribe. And if you do, you'll get the episode as soon as I upload it. If you hit the notification button on YouTube, you will be notified as soon as I upload these uh, episodes. And uh, also, if you're on the podcast side as well, if you hit the auto up um, download um, button tab, it should automatically download for you. So soon as it comes up, it'll download for you and be ready for you to listen on your devices. Also, if you want to donate, if you want to, you could donate if you want to go ahead and do that and uh, hit the cash app, which is VF Baller 20, or you can go ahead and hit the uh, anchor link as well. And like I said, I got other ones that I want to put up down the road. I just haven't been able to. All right, y'all. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for the support. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you on the next one. You guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Peace.